like your girl grinding she hustling she doing it i'm excited for the results i'm excited to see where this thing goes in the next year two years three years five years but i'm gonna tell y'all it's just it's not an easy task like i can get coins out this thing what so let's be clear hold up back up <laughs> i didn't think this thing through at all i'm at work let's stay focused on work i don't want to talk about none of that Hey y'all, this is Tamika, the face behind Hey HR. <laughs> so listen, we are going to talk about a topic that I figured I'd share because it's been so heavy on my mind lately. And that topic is balancing being an HR director as well as a YouTuber, influencer, business owner, you know, that type of realm of my life. I really wasn't thinking that I was going to, let's be clear, hold up, back up. <laughs> I didn't think this thing through at all. I have said over and over again, so I probably sound like a broken record, that I totally thought that I was making a YouTube channel because I was getting overwhelmed with the number of phone calls, emails, whatever, text messages that I've been getting from so many people in different areas in my life that I wanted to be able to just send them a YouTube link and just say, here you go, here are all the answers to your questions. As I researched YouTube more, I realized that there was just so many different opportunities for me. It was like, why not just take it there? Like, you just gonna do this and just let all of these opportunities stay on the table? Obviously, majority of the opportunities or the biggest opportunities, I'll say the biggest opportunities for me, were one, reaching a larger audience. Like, not just the people I knew, but the people who actually needed this information. You know, my second biggest thing was, oh my God, like, I don't have to do this for free. <laughs> like, I can get coins out this thing. What? Those have been my biggest, biggest factors. It initially started with the idea of, gosh, if I can tell more and more people and more and more people can be aware, more and more people can live amazing lives, they can be comfortable with their decisions. And I felt like I had already hit a lot of hurdles so that they could just propel themselves. But secondly, it was like, okay, yeah, let me get these, this money while I'm out here. So if you guys want to know five of my biggest challenges of balancing being an HR leader as well as a YouTuber, then definitely stay tuned. If y'all like what your girl's doing over here with Hey HR, you enjoyed this video, definitely give me a thumbs up. If you have not subscribed yet, then please consider subscribing. So my first biggest challenge is balancing my personal life. So I thought like this was a good time to do this because my daughter had just turned 18. Actually, I started before my daughter turned 18, but she was a teenager and I was just like, I don't have a toddler that I have to get to daycare or that I need to like, or baby I need to bottle feed or anything like that. Like my daughter is a teenager, she's kind of in a space where she wants to do her own thing and like is not being huddled around me all the time. Even though I must admit, I miss those days and I would love to have those days back. But while she's going through this phase in her life, it allowed me a lot of freedom I didn't have before. Like time that I didn't have before. And so starting YouTube, it was like, okay, this is a good time to do it as well as doing my full-time career. But I've also been working at my church and that was a lot to handle. Um, so I resigned from that position. So that's given me a little bit of breathing room, not really no free time. Now I'm looking at the things I gotta do. Like what are the things I full fledged gotta do? So I gotta go grocery shopping. Okay, so now grocery shopping isn't just going grocery shopping. So now it's a little bit different because it's like, how much am I shopping for? I really need to go into the store when it's empty. So I try to go first thing in the morning. It's okay, what all am I getting? Because I'm not a person that like to go out to lunch. So I like to make sure that I have more than enough lunch for work. And then now, since I've been doing YouTube and like my full-time job, I really don't have time to cook. Cooking wasn't a priority for me, let's be honest. I did it out of necessity. And I don't mind cooking. Like over quarantine, I really enjoyed it. It 
has now became where I don't even have time. Like, I don't have time to think through a menu. I don't have time to think through what I'm making. And it's like, well, it's kind of okay because it's literally just me that I'm feeding. So I was like, okay, cool. I can do without having to cook, but I need to come up with a really good schedule. And so luckily, like you guys have seen on my video before, when I told you guys all about my new job, my best friends got me a deep freezer. So that was like a game changer for me. So now when I go into the grocery store, I really could buy a lot of stuff and not have to worry about space. But going to the grocery store became an extra task. Like, and it wasn't before. So I'm probably gonna work on, you know, online shopping or what have you. I just haven't gotten that good in life yet. But that's gonna be something I have to like now think through when I didn't have to think through that before. Scheduling doctor's appointments is another thing. Before it was like, I really lived and worked very close to my doctor's office, so it was nothing for me to schedule a doctor's appointment on the same day of a work day. Um, my previous employer was so flexible with our schedule, and we worked like all the time. So it was like, okay, if I take a couple hours at the end of the day or in the middle of the day to go to the doctor's appointment, nobody really noticed, nobody cared because I'm still replying to emails, I'm still jumping on the system when I get home, I'm still available to them, and everybody was just so respectful that when you say, hey, I'm at a doctor's appointment, I'll reach out to you. It was never a big thing. That's very different with my current job. Like, if I just take a day of PTO, it's like, so you, why'd you take a day off? So that's something that's very different with my current job because now, I mean, if you just take a day of PTO, at least a couple of people gonna ask you, well, why'd you take PTO? And to me, it's like, like I literally catch myself jumping because I'm like, why does it matter? It's my time. <laughs> like it blows me. But then even if I say, hey, oh, well, I wanted to attend a YouTube conference, which is one time why I took PTO off, or I have a doctor's appointment, it turns into, what well, is everything okay? And it's like, I'm at work. Let's stay focused on work. I don't want to talk about none of that. So now that's became such a balance, just trying to figure out the best time for doctor's appointments. And so it's just became a lot to toddle with. So obviously if those things are difficult, then you know, making a hair appointment, making an appointment for my nails, whatever, is just like, it's an extra task. So I really think that I should have thought through better, like balancing my personal life along with being a YouTuber. And obviously making sure that I incorporated that time into my work schedule and my commute. My commute to work is draining. If you guys follow me on IG, which I'll make sure to put my IG handle here, it's HR on IG, just like it is on YouTube, except it's without the exclamation mark. Like, guys, look at my stories and y'all probably gonna see me every day, like complaining about traffic. And that has just been a monster because most times I'm up, Pretty late at night either editing videos doing a live replying to comments planning content for a new video what have you and so when I get up and get my morning started like it's so frustrating to be in traffic for an hour hour and a half for a 20 minute commute and lastly my time with my friends is important I normally like to find some friend time where we either like do a breakfast date so me and my best friend are really good about doing back breakfast dates um, I have another friend that we like to go out to dinner on Fridays it's just things that I like to do that I'm like, oh my God, I feel like it's impeding in my schedule. And so that's only because I'm trying to balance being an HR leader along with being a YouTuber. And so it's just, it's something I didn't think would be so heavy to plan. So obviously that leads you into my other issue, which is taking time to plan. Y'all, before I can plan at the beginning of the month and I would be good, I probably would look at my schedule on like a weekly basis just to make sure that I'm staying on track. Like it was normally just a, a check-in. But now I feel like I am forced to think, totally think ahead, think about what the year looks like, break that down into the months or the quarters actually. And then once I get that into the months, then I can define it by like a week. And it's like, okay, so I'm planning my work life, I'm planning my home life, and I'm planning my YouTube life. So it's like phases of planning now. Before it was like, okay, I'm gonna punch in appointments on my schedule as I needed that were big, if they were work or, or personal. And then I'll fit in everything else around that. And I had finally got to a schedule where I was like, okay, now I can totally put in like self-care time. So if I wanted to get a pedicure, if I wanted to get a facial, if I wanted to get a massage, like I could totally fit those things in my schedule. But now it's like, okay, so 
I have goals. I have goals at work. I have goals at home. I have goals with YouTube. So it's like, if I really want to get to those goals, then I can't just plan this stuff. I got to be strategic how I'm doing it. So at work, I got all of these audits I want to get done because I want to start diving into some plans that would just benefit us in other areas better versus just cleaning us up. Then, okay, now I really got to be forceful about making sure I knock this out regardless of the unexpected seeds that come up. With personal life, it's like, okay, I have goals, my personal self, of making sure that I do a trip on a regular basis, making sure that I keep valuable friendships, like keep those relationships clear, making sure that I keep my relationship with God clear. And so it's like, okay, I'm being more forceful and intentional about keeping those where they should be. And so the same thing with YouTube. It's like, okay, I knew that by my first year, I said, even though I couldn't get a thousand subscribers within the first quarter, which was originally my first goal, didn't realize how much work went into that thing. So anyhow, I moved that to being like, okay, by my first year anniversary, I want a thousand subscribers. Well, I stayed on my goals and it went really well. Um, and I was able to get that within nine months, which was awesome. But it did require me being strategic about how to literally keep like subscribers engaged, you know, changing my thumbnail, changing my title, promoting my videos more, what topics to do. It's just, it just been a lot of work. Like, it's just a lot of work. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. Like your girl grinding. She hustling. She doing it. I'm excited for the results. I'm excited to see where this thing goes in the next year, two years, three years, five years. But I'm going to tell y'all, it's just, it's not an easy task. So some of the things that I've done to help me with making sure that I stick to a better plan is now I'm implementing more help. So I have some contract work that I send out to get done on some things. And honestly, most of that are like future things that you guys haven't seen. So they've been working on some future stuff for me so that I can still attain goals while I maintain my regular every day to day. I would love to get a virtual assistant. So I'm definitely looking at what duties I can pass off to someone else that not only am I comfortable with, but that are truly like sucking my time. Like I've been kind of being intentional about those things so that I can plan for even more help because with it being a one person show is kind of crazy. It's just kind of using more features into some of the things that I've already been using. But mind you, Squarespace and Linktree are still very new to my channel. Um, I've been using those for like the past month. So with my plan now, it's forcing me to, instead of just looking at my goals on like a monthly basis, which is what I've done for years, now I literally have to compare my weekly to my monthly often and I have to compare my daily to my weekly often like way more often than I ever had before like yeah I'm looking at it a lot I think implementing systems is going to be so much better getting these audits out of the way at work is going to be so much better and I think that's going to like help me a lot like right now I just I need to remember that you know I just can't do it all by myself if I wanted to be successful I shouldn't do it all by myself if your girl got to work on her planning her systems and her help. <laughs> so another struggle with balancing being an HR leader and being a YouTuber is staying focused on my niche. So it's like really good that things are going well, but the better things go, the more people are like informed of what I'm doing. And like, I guess the more, like there's more awareness to everything that I'm doing. Everybody has a suggestion. Like everybody has a suggestion. And I have to remember, does this suggestion fit in with my niche? Is this suggestion going to say something that these people around me are excited about? Or is my, my target audience persona excited about it as well? Is these 1,100 people that are following me, like, do they want to know this? And so it gets a little bit crazy because I, I, do, I hate to tell people like, oh, no, that's a bad idea. But it's like, no, I know my platform or I'm getting comfortable with it. And if I don't know it, the only way I can refine it is if I stay in one lane. So that's been a big thing. Dang, what you girl about? So I gotta stay focused on my niche. So when people are like, oh, you should do this, 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 I'm like, that mean the people I'm looking for. Like, that mean the people I'm looking for. <laughs> so reviewing my workflows have really helped me with staying in my niche. Um, Like kind of reviewing where I find myself kind of Dean more things. So like if my clients, I'm on a client call or I'm doing a client follow up and I'm like, oh, this really would help. It helps me focus on that type of audience because that client needs it. Another client probably needs it. And so it helps me kind of refine and make the process better for each target 
audience persona and so it's like okay these things though they may seem overwhelming they're temporary and they're helping to me to refine my target audience persona and to make the experience better and to attract more clients so y'all can just imagine that marketing promoting like all of that stuff is not something I went to school for <laughs> so it's super duper new and it's super overwhelming because you're literally trying to think for someone else and try to figure out how to grab their attention and how to get your voice heard when it's just you. So that has been a lot with my niche, but I think the more I refine my niche, the better it will be with me trying to like hit my target audience persona. So this one might be a little weird, and I probably could have said this earlier on, but this y'all know none of my lists are like in order. I just shoot them out there. But just deciding how much of my YouTube life I want to share with my full-time job. I was told that I step apart from the competition because I had a YouTube channel. They were able to kind of see my personality early. They were able to see that I really was committed to HR, things like that. So it helped me get the job, which is great, but it's also a headache too because it's like, Okay, you guys helped me get the job and now everybody is like living life as though it doesn't exist. And I guess they thought that I'd just do a channel here and there. I mean a video here and there. But that's not my intent. If you saw me being consistent the whole time, then I'm probably going to still be consistent. <sighs> some people pay attention to it and some people don't. Some people set expectations of what they think you can do on the job or what they want you to do on the job based on your videos. Some people don't. It's a little crazy because... But the people who I think can benefit most from looking at my videos aren't looking at them. So they come to me with requests that I'm like, I think I got about five videos that's going to tell you. I ain't that girl. <laughs> like, I ain't that girl. Like, where you look at, where did you see that you thought, I'm about that life? Because that ain't me. <laughs> it's just crazy. Yeah, so I'm like, okay, obviously... You're not watching my videos. So you guys can look back at my video to see when I got a new job. And I started my new job June 1st, 2021. Right now it's literally Halloween, October 31st, 2021. In the last four months, it's been very, very interesting. But the only thing I've mentioned about my YouTube channel in a formal setting, like in a meeting or anything like that, a presentation, was when I reached 1,000 subscribers. Other than that, I haven't mentioned anything about my YouTube channel. They'll mention it to me or sometimes like, you know, regular employees, not like a C-suite or a manager or a leader, they might say something and I'll say something back about it. But like, as far as my leaders, I don't say anything. I mean, I took off some days for the Vid Summit conference and I've asked for permission for vlogging. Um, And beyond that, that's been it. So now the last biggest, craziest thing for me with balancing these two lives is keeping up with the YouTube and IG algorithm. Like, I have not been a serial poster since Facebook started with just college students, like way back in the day when nobody else could get on. And even then, it was not strategic, it was not constant. It totally depends on what I had going on in life. Now, not only do you have to constantly keep folks intrigued on the platform, which means you're on the platform a lot, but you have to be strategic about what you're posting. Like, you got to kind of think through what it is you're doing, what it is you're saying. Um, I think I'll get to the day where I don't have to, but right now, while I'm trying to attract clients, I'm trying to attract folks to watch my videos, while I'm trying to attract people who may want to buy my products, I have to be strategic about my posts. So that's been a lot with keeping up with the YouTube and the IG algorithm. So that's part of the reason I've been going live every week. It has really grown and it's really done better and, and that's been a great thing. But obviously, like, I still am growing a brand. I don't want to mix my brand with any company I ever work for. Um, and... You know, keeping up with the algorithm is difficult because the algorithm is not paying attention to the fact that you're working a full-time job. The algorithm is not paying attention to the fact that you are making time for client calls. The algorithm is not paying attention to the time that you have to do, like, follow-up information for your clients. The algorithm isn't paying attention to the fact that you might be on another platform, like, because I want to make sure that my digital products are ones that clients like. I want to make sure that my services are ones that are keeping them from saying, you know what, I need to come back to Tamika. That could be a lot to juggle with the algorithm, but 
it is what it is. So those are my major challenges with trying to manage, you know, being a full-time HR leader, HR director, as well as being a YouTuber slash influencer slash business owner. For all of you guys who got happy thoughts for your girl, keep me in your happy thoughts. I'll keep praying. I'll keep asking God to protect me, guide me, lead me, and I will follow whatever his path is for me. But in the meantime, even though it's a lot, I have been thoroughly enjoying it. If y'all like what your girl's doing over here with HR, you enjoyed this video, definitely give me a thumbs up. If you have not subscribed yet, then please consider subscribing. And I just cannot wait to see y'all on the next HR video.